As God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. Happy Thanksgiving, H-Town. Get ready to give thanks for baseball on the Believe in Astros podcast with Jeff Blum and Jeff Balky. We're counting down the top five things we're thankful for in baseball right now. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and uh, welcome to episode 32 of the Believe in Astros podcast on the Believe Podcasting Network. I'm Jeff Balky. And Jeff Blum with me as always. Uh, you can find us on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, and YouTube. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and keep up with us. Uh, Twitter is still around, as far as we know. So you can follow <laughs> us at, at Believe in Astros. I'm at Jeff Balky and Blummer's at Blummer27. Blummer, happy uh, pre Thanksgiving. You, I, I know you told me before we got on here that you need to set your base uh, for eating. Um, are you planning a big shindig? Are you going to be eating a tremendous amount of turkey? Like, what's the story? Uh, I'm a huge Thanksgiving guy. I just, I, I appreciate the fact that you came up with the idea to give thanks for baseball this, this week on this podcast. And I'm also just grateful all the way around because I've got one of the greatest jobs on the planet, one of the greatest families on the planet living in one of the greatest cities on the planet. So there's a lot to be grateful for, but uh, I do eat quite a bit and I do enjoy having family over, which uh, they're flying out and visiting with us and they'll be with us. And uh, I do have a turkey ready to fry. Oh, you're frying. I'm a fryer. I I fry turkeys every uh, Thanksgiving. So that's kind of my forte. You go out on the, uh, do you, do you go out on the driveway and drop it in like the big canister? I've never done it before like that. Yeah, so I'm I'm an electric fryer because oh. the propane and all the videos on TikTok and Instagram yeah, no and scare the living you know what out of me. So <laughs> I, I'm I choose to go with the controllable, set the temp, wait for it to get there, green light pops, drop the turkey in after it's been thawing, folks. Right, and then we then we fry it. Yeah, very very I'm smart. very cautious. I have two turkeys. Uh, I always get a second uh, because I love leftovers probably more than I like turkey the day of. Nice. Um, so I always get a big one and a little one. And I'm a smoke guy, so I will Ooh. be smoking both my... I'm smoking one tomorrow, the little one, in advance, and then the big one on the day. And the big one doesn't really fit in my smoker, <laughs> so I end up spatchcocking it, which sounds dirty, but it really just means cutting the backbone out of it. And let me tell oh. you... That process is disgusting in every possible way. Sounds my wife terrible. literally wants to leave the house when I'm doing it. Like, are you <laughs> snapping like the hips and all that, or whatever? It you is? have like, to. You have to. You have to slice the backbone out of it with a knife, which is very difficult. I will. Yeah. May, I will say, and like, I you almost have to use like a saw blade. So I get the serrated edge, and I'm like <laughs> sawing through bone. Then you pull the backbone's like this. I mean, it's huge, mm-hmm. right? So you get the backbone out, and then you flip it over, and you you push down it as hard as you can until the it, the, the breastbone snaps. That's what it is. Oh, it's man. so nasty. Yeah. <laughs> but, man, I tell you, it cooks fast, and it stays super moist. You don't have to worry about injecting it or any of the other crazy go. stuff that people do. So that's, that's a good thing. So, yeah, it will be a big party. Um, a quick word for our sponsor, Bet Online. Base, uh, baseball is not back. Baseball is just we all wish a hot it was. step. Yeah, we all do. Basketball is back and remains bet on and and bet online remains your number one source for all sports betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online, and your continued uh, source for all sports wagering information. Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest, easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events, whether that's NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, golf, World Cup, perhaps. Um, and I tell you, NFL, good game to bet on on Thanksgiving. Cowboys and Giants, that's one of the better games on Thanksgiving we've had in a while. That's going to be a good one. Cowboys look legit as much Cowboys as I hate to legit. say it. Yeah. I'm a big as much as I hate to say it. Oh, yeah. Head to betonline.ag and join in, uh, and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. So just a couple of notes uh before we dig into our top five josh james was non-tendered by the astros uh i don't think a huge surprise you know he's 30 years old he's been never really he, you know he, he kind of reminds me of but for different reasons is john singleton if you remember him for the astros oh, they kept trying speaking to bring of guys up, that are switching spots 
Yeah, right? It's like kept trying to bring the guy up, kept trying to bring the guy up. It just never worked out. Now, in his case, he got busted for weed a couple of times, so very different than Josh James, but just never really materialized as a pitcher for the Astros, unfortunately, so they they move on from him. Yeah, big flames, James. Uh, you know, we had high hopes for for James in that bullpen and out of the rotation. He was mm-hmm. one of those guys that splashed on with the 100-mile-an-hour fastball. Injuries got to him and unable to fight his way back. But John Singleton being on the 40-man in Milwaukee is one of the probably sneakier stories if you're an Astro fan to hear about. I know. Really interesting that he managed to Mm -hmm. sneak onto the 40-man roster. (laughs) Um, So Josh James will join other non-tendered free agents such as Cody Bellinger. Hmm. Oh, yeah. What a shame. Uh, Justin Verlander, apparently in talks with the Mets, uh, among others, just as you and I had suspected might be the case. Um, Why wouldn't you call Steve Cohen if you want a big contract? I mean, that guy, I feel like I should just call him up and be like, listen, man, can you just spot me a grand or something? Do do you need a seventh guy in your booth? (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, my goodness. Let's just hire everybody, why don't we, Steve Cohen? Um, so not a, not a real surprise there. They have the money. J- obviously, JV is looking for a payday. He look. He may he and Max Scherzer may not get along, but there's no doubt the competitive edge between those two is legit, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure he wants to get paid more than him. Yeah, and I mean, what what better? I mean, th- there's also that other that theory of thought that says, man, even if you guys hate each other, if you try and one up each other every yeah. single start, we're going to have a good year. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Last <laughs> thing before we get to our top five, Ken Rosenthal is reporting that the Astros maintain interest in Jose Abreu. Apparently, there are three teams interested in him: uh, Astros, the Padres, and the Cubs. Um, I have a hard time imagining him going across town to the Cubs. Um, I don't think they're going to have be able to offer him enough money. But the Padres, I, I could see it. Um, they have an open mm-hmm. spot, kind of the way the Astros do. Uh, kind of wonder, and and they're both contenders, you know, legit contenders. So I, I think it's and and let's be honest, Blum, you probably a little torn. Um, some of your your <laughs> your uh, your um, loyalties might be a little spread between these two. Um, but uh, interesting, interesting maneuvers there would be a great get for either team. No, it would. You know, uh, Jose Abreu, and we know about the the value of a Cuban first baseman because Yuli has been such an asset for the Houston Astros, and maybe there's a connection with some of the Cuban mm-hmm. players on the Astros that maybe they can influence the decision a little bit. Yeah. But at the same time, if I, if you're if you're if you're approaching Jose Abreu, you say. Okay, maybe we don't have the funds to go after a Padres type contract if they're offering you an exorbitant amount of money, but our ballpark ballpark is extremely hitter friendly compared to Petco Park. That is a big yard <laughs> to try and put up some numbers. Yeah. Also I have four words for him. No state employment tax. I have yes. four four words for a California versus Texas. When it comes to that there is zero comparison. So whatever you get from San Diego, never mind living expenses, whatever you get from San Diego, the Astros could offer him 10% less and it would still be the same amount of if money. If not more. Yeah, yeah if shoot. not more. Yeah, yeah. I so, mean, that, the money he's going to garner is going to put him in that uh, extreme tax bracket. <laughs> exactly. Especially in Cali. Woo, Lord. Ooh. I do not want to yeah. be out there for that. All right, so let's get into this. It's Thanksgiving. It's time to give thanks. In this case... Give thanks for baseball because let's all be honest, but there's giving thanks for baseball just period on the whole is is first and foremost. Man, what a what a great season for the Astros and the World Series. Um, just spectacular. What a great way to uh to to enter the hot stove league. Um so I'm ready, Blum, are you ready? Oh, you kidding me? Heck yeah. <laughs> all right, here we go. All right, I will start with this, and so Blummer, you can have the final say. My number five, the universal designated hitter. I, <laughs> and here is my reasoning. I know that there are lots of people who love the strategy or the strategery of uh, the end of games, and that's great, but other than J.R. Richard, Mike Hampton, and, Ma- and Shohei Otani, I don't want to see a pitcher come to the plate. It's a, it's silly. It's embarrassing. 
it's really the only good thing about it is that I get to take a bathroom break when it occurs. <laughs> There's nothing good about watching a pitcher flail away at a baseball. And so my number five is God bless baseball for uh, for instituting the universal designated hitter. Plumber? That's a good one because, uh, you, I mean, you've written pretty, plenty of articles. You've been on, on radio and broadcast. But at the same time, as a broadcaster, I can't stand. Pitchers come to the plate. You almost, like you said, you start checking off other notes or going to different storylines and, and, and things like that. But uh, my number five is I'm grateful for the fact the Astros actually moved to the American League. To your point, in 2013, moving to the DH in the American League, and oh, by the way, getting out of the National League Central, getting away from the Cardinals, and moving into the AL West turned the Astros into a dynasty where they have won the West as numerous times, and everybody in the West knows that it goes through Houston. So I'm grateful for that move to the American League. Amazingly enough, after playing so much National League baseball, who knew going to the American League would turn these guys into a dynasty? The Astros own the AL uh, and, and it is, it has been incredible. And you are one of the, the, it's good that you admit that because there are plenty mm-hmm. of people who did not want to go to the AL. We all know the Astros were pushed into the AL. It was not yep. really, a, it was not a choice. So it ended up working out pretty well for everybody. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. All right. My number four the New York Yankees. I am thankful for the New York <laughs> Yankees. <laughs> and a lot of people are going to say, what? How could you be thankful for the New York Yankees? Because friends, family members, uh, constituents, I would just like to submit that the Astros are in the World Series multiple times, at least in small part to the New York Yankees. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> the New York Yankees have been a juggernaut forever, but the Astros are their daddy. And putting them in, it, it reminds me of of you know when the Bills went to the went to the uh, Super Bowl like three times, lost every oh, time. Man. You just you don't want to put somebody like the Yankees in front of the because first the Yankees have struggled against the Astros. Period. Second, the Astros love playing them. I feel like the, <laughs> I, they just love it. They they relish the chance to go after them. So I'm very thankful for the New York Yankees this year. <laughs> That's a good one. No, I mean, shoot, who knew the evil empire could be overwhelmed by another evil empire, the Houston Astros, and they've dominated the situation. I actually had number four. I put down, I'm, I'm grateful for this dynasty. I tried to allude to it in my number five, moving to the American League. But to your point, the uh, New York Yankees continually think that they are a hurdle in the American League, yet the Astros continue to overwhelm them. But I was grateful for the fact that you brought up the Bills. How about the Braves of the 1990s? Everybody calls them a dynasty, but guess what? They only won one championship. The Astros have won two out of four opportunities in the World Series, and they have dominated. They're not the Dodgers. They're not the Bills. They're not the Yankees. They're not the Braves. This is a strong time to be an Astros fan. I appreciate the fact that my voice gets to be on the golden era of baseball here in Houston, but this is a bona fide dynasty in my mind. Man, that is a great call. It, what's so great about this Astros team, too, is that, in all honesty, setting aside the the uh, sign-stealing scandal, setting all that stuff aside, the Astros are a team you want to like, too. It's not a team filled with, like, jerks. It's not a team filled mm-hmm. with Cody Bellingers. It's not a team filled <laughs> with guys that are going to, you know, that are going to behave in a certain... These are guys that you, you root for. Jose Altuve... I don't care what anybody says about the oh, whole man. buzzer gate nonsense. Jose Altuve is a guy you root for. Mm-hmm. In yes. any other circumstance, everyone loves this guy. He's too small to play baseball. He grew up learning how to hit a ball with you know with bottle caps and a broom handle for Christ's mm-hmm. sake. Think about so, that. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a team you root for. So they they deserve to be a dynasty and hey man, good for them. That's a great one, Blummer. I love it. All right, let's move on. My number three is Dusty Baker. Um, You know, never mind that he steadied the Astros franchise at a very difficult time or that he came in and, you know, just played good guy, really. He did two things to me that that are better than anything else he's done in the entire time here. Number one, he taught fans, myself included, about patience. 
He <laughs> re- he did not panic at any time. He did not pull the string on anybody because oh they're not playing particularly well at this moment. He stayed with guys. He followed his instincts. And number 2, the guy's 73 years old and he figured out how to work with analytics. I mean, how mm-hmm. many other guys in sports or in anywhere, you know, when they got to a certain age would just suddenly decide, okay, I'm going to embrace something new. My mom was in her 50s. Her enti- When she was a kid, she really wanted to be an artist. But her teachers told her she was terrible at it. She couldn't color inside the lines, blah, blah, blah. When she got into her 50s, she decided, you know what, to hell with that. And now she's got art hanging in galleries because she's a great artist. And it, she waited until she got into middle age to be able to do it. So... To me, she's my hero because she decided to change and was willing to do it. And Dusty Baker, for the exact same reason, and he deserved uh, he deserved to win the title finally. That is a very good one, and I think raising that title, I'm gonna get I'm gonna circle back to Dusty because I have him higher ranked a little bit higher on my scale. But yep. I do like that one at number three. I've got. I am very thankful that Rob Manfred was able to hand the trophy to Jim Crane. I think that uh, after everything that has gone, that this organization has gone through, Jim Crane being patient, building a winner, uh, you know, taking a lot of criticism, and I know yeah. he still takes a lot of criticism, but there was a certain sense of satisfaction watching Rob Manfred hand over the World Series trophy to Jim Crane, watching Jim Crane grab that thing from Rob Manfred, put it under his arm, and have a little bit of a hint of a tear in his eye as he recognized how important and how satisfying this World Series championship in 2022 was for the entire team. And, I, you know, it's not Jim, you know, shedding a tear because he finally gets to, you know, thumb his nose at Rob Manfred for everything he brought onto this organization. I think it was satisfaction in knowing that he put a team out there that worked hard enough to earn this championship. So he earned it. He got to raise it. And uh, yeah, that was a, that was a special moment for me. Yeah, that's fantastic. And and look, let's be honest. If you do get to rub Rob Banford's nose in it a little bit, all the better. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's but, all the but, sweeter. But I'm with you, Jim Crane. Like he's, I mean, one of the things that's been so great about him is he's he's really defied all of people's predictions, and I Completely. love that kind of thing. He's everybody yep. said, oh well. He's, you know, he didn't spend all of his own money on this, so he's not going to have any money to spend. He's going to be cheap. You know, he has demonstrated that not only is he not cheap, he's willing to spend, but he's aggressive and yeah. just as good a circumstance. The guy loves the sport. He clearly wants to win yes, that is more so than true. anything else. I mean, it, it has to speak somewhat to the fact that he played, right? No, I think it does, and he, and he's another one of those stories. We've all heard him. I mean, I've talked to thousands of people that were like, oh, I was great in high school. I went to college, blew out, didn't get my shot. He turned that. <laughs> well, fortunately, <laughs> he obviously has a brain for making money, and he went out yep. there and obviously had opportunities that he took advantage of and created. But, yeah, he's a guy who still has that competitive bone in his body. You know, he's a low-handicap golfer. He he likes to compete in the business world, and now he has himself a baseball team. And I think there's a little extra incentive for him to go out there and compete against some of these other owners that maybe shunned him when he tried to buy the uh, Texas Rangers. Now he has a team down here in Houston. Thankfully, that worked out. But yeah, he, he's... He's going to take a lot of you're going to take a lot of criticism when you're when you're at the top, and yeah. I think he understands that. But at the same time, uh, it had to feel sweet taking that trophy from Rob Manfred. Or that, sorry, I re, got to rephrase for Rob Manfred that hunk of metal. <laughs> nice plumber. That's pretty good. All right, let's get to number two. Okay, so mine is a split one between two guys, and that is Christian Javier and Hunter Brown. And the reason these guys are up on my it's list like, like this... It's almost like we're on the same wavelength, man. I don't want to interrupt, <laughs> but go keep finishing. I mean, Excellent. we're on the same page almost. I, I think because, not just because they're great, which they clearly are. I mean, Christian Javier with that invisible pitch, right? Just mm-hmm. unreal. But it offers the team so much flexibility. They are not worried about whether or not Justin Verlander signs with the Mets. They're not concerned if they have to make a move in the offseason to acquire someone if they need to use some of their pitching depth to make that happen. And honestly, 
it would be no shock if at some point next season their top three starters are Framber Valdez, Christian Javier, and Hunter Brown. <laughs> and, I mean, that's remarkable considering Hunter Brown was a rookie this past year. So those two guys together, look, this whole pitching staff is great. We know it. We know the pitching staff, the bullpen, the rotation. It's all great. It's going to continue to be great. And we don't want to leave out Lance McCullers and Jose Urquidy and obviously mm-hmm. Framber. But the reality is these two guys, because of their age – and because of their talent at this age, it affords the Astros an unbelievable opportunity uh, to continue a great pitching staff, not just now, but into the future. And that's remarkable. I completely agree. And that's why my number two is very similar to your, yours. But I just, put over, I just put a bigger umbrella on top of it and said youth. I think yeah. it's remarkable what the Astros have been able to do and create this winning window that is still continuing. And I think we're seeing, even in Vegas, after the World Series, the odds come out. The Dodgers, of course, are number one because they spend so much money and have yep. a lot of talent. The Astros are second in the World Series possibilities for next for 2023, and a lot of the reason is the youth. And you go back to 14. I've seen this so many different places, both on MLB Network, a lot of articles being written. You know, the George Springer in 14, Carlos Correa, Lance McCullers in 15. Uh, you go to 2017, you've got Alex Bregman. There have been so many names that have moved on. Jordan Alvarez in 2019. They continue to develop. <laughs> talent to replace veterans that continue to move on and this is to your point jv as much as you want him back it's not a necessity it's not a desperation it's just a fact of man it'd be great to still have you here because i think you enhance our rotation and you give us an opportunity to win but at the same time we can let a guy or I should say the Astros can let a guy go because mm. they have the Christian Javiers. They have the Framber Valdez, Lance McCullers, Jose Urquidy, Luis Garcia, Christian Javiers to go out there and compete. And Luis Garcia, speaking of rookies, guess who has – if JV doesn't come back and this guy's in the rotation, guess who, guess who has another opportunity to sneak into a top three possibly in the Rookie of the Year in 2023? Oh, gee, Hunter Brown, are you kidding me? This is it's, remarkable, and not incredible. to mention Jeremy Pena winning. You know, all, you know, wasn't in contention, but wins World Series and ALCS MVP. So that's another impact rookie. Pedro Leon, there, the, that might be a guy that we talk about too. There may be competition between Hunter Brown and Pedro Leon. Who knows? That's what's it, crazy. And it, so the youth movement for the Astros continuing for this long is remarkable to me. It's incredible, and when you think too, you've got guys like. Uh, you know, Corey Lee, Corey who might Lee. come up and play. Yiner. And, and Yiner Diaz. I mean, these are just the names that keep coming. You're, <laughs> I, it's just ridiculous. And really what's remarkable about it, when you look across the spectrum, you know, what team has ever just said to their, their ace, quote unquote, <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. You know, we, we're good. I we mean, appreciate we appreciate you, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're all good. It's, and, and really, how they have timed this, and I don't know if yeah. they could have. I mean, it's not just the the fact that they're young, but the fact that they've timed the arc of their youth. And maybe they haven't timed it. Maybe some of it was just dumb luck. You know, um, you got to have a little of that. That's how you, I got it. You know, here. but like when, <laughs> but when you get when you get that arc like that, where it's just okay, we're gonna plug this guy. Next is Kyle Tucker. Then we've, mm-hmm. yeah, we've got Alex Bregman, we've got Jeremy Pena, we've got Jordan Alvarez, we've got Hunter Brown, we've got, and it just goes on and on and on. You just kind of sit there and marvel at the fact that this is a team that everybody's like, well, when is their window going to close? I'm like, not real soon. May I mean, when they've got, it's it's inevitable that all teams will have to go through some kind of down period. But mm-hmm. I mean, when you've got, legitimately five, six guys who every year could be in contention for gold glove, MVP, you know, all MLB team, stuff like that. I don't know, man. That's a pretty strong core. So, yeah, youth. God bless it. I wish I, you know, youth, they always say youth is wasted on the young. But maybe not for the Astros, right? Not for the Astros, yeah. I'll I'll just sit back and enjoy it and try and absorb it. Exactly. (laughs) Is it? Could we just maybe? Could they just emanate some of that off to us so we could just absorb? I just try and stand close enough that maybe I'll get a couple of. (laughs) 
you know, it's molecules like maybe next them. year just put your arm a little closer to Hunter Brown's arm. Just a little. Yeah, just right. Just going to be like, here you go, man. Can I suck a little of that off? <laughs> Can I take a little of that energy? Yep. All right, here we go. Number one. Speaking of youth, Jeremy Pena is my number one. Um, he has rapidly become one of my favorite Astros for many reasons. Mm-hmm. Um you know, we've talked about how uh, having a father that played baseball was such a big deal for him. You know, he is a guy that I genuinely believe has real superstar potential. Like out of uh, Jordan Alvarez certainly does as well, just simply because of the big bat. But Jeremy Pena has a lot of attributes that make him, you know, superstar like ready. He loves the spotlight. Mm-hmm. He's uh, a, a nice looking young kid who is very in, clearly very intelligent. He comes from a baseball family, so he knows what to expect. Um, he's got that big smile. He does that thing with the heart, you know, which is like, I mean, already a signature, you know, as a, yep. as a rookie. Um, I just feel like Jeremy Pena has the opportunity at some point to become the face of this franchise. And to think that a year ago, we were all sitting around here fretting about what was going to happen with Carlos Correa. I know. Uh, everybody was worried that Carlos Correa was going to be gone, and then we were going to be stuck with a hole at shortstop. We were trying to figure out who could we sign in free agency to pick up. And the Astros just casually, like we said, just sort of like, oh, by the way, we have this kid we think might be good at shortstop. Mm-hmm. And they just plug him in, and he just you know went through – the ups and downs of a rookie season, and then just emerged in the postseason. I've used that line before that I've heard from players in the NBA that the uh, regular season is where you make your name and the playoffs are where you make your fame. He made his fame this year, and I just feel like the growth, uh, that he still has ways to grow, and it's it's remarkable. Um, As much as there are so many things I'm grateful for, honestly, Jeremy Pena might be my favorite. Seeing him hit those home runs in the postseason, seeing him – you know, uh, become that player that we all hoped he would be uh, was just a remarkable thing. And, and I'm I'm ha- so happy for the kid, and I'm happy for me because I get to watch the Astros play with him. Well, and I was just going to j- piggyback on the back of that and say that that was his rookie year. We've got five more years of this guy no matter what. Unbelievable. He's under I mean, club control, and I mean, if he has another year like he just had, maybe they go out there and give him one of those extended contracts. So, man, you you are right. Jeremy Pena, I mean, he's he's number three on the field, I think, number one in our hearts, uh, <laughs> and number one in a lot of a lot of ladies' hearts out there. So he, oh. he's going to be consistently breaking hearts between between. Look, but with all he did in the World Series and everything else, he is he is going to have women, and he's never going to have to buy a drink again. In the city of Houston. And then, yeah, you're right. He's going to be breaking a lot of... Look, O to be young... He's breaking hearts on the field. He's breaking hearts off the field. Let's just... O to be young and (laughs) good-looking and like and the top of the world. My goodness, what a a life that must be. Yep, that is true. And my number one is the exact opposite. It is our manager, Dusty Baker. He is elder. He is a little bit older, obviously, but he (laughs) ran this team. And you brought up some good points earlier about the analytics for uh, Dusty Baker. Kind of came in, uh, adjusted to the situation, but used them in a way that I think that really benefited the Astros down the stretch. And we've all been critical, myself being one of them, Mm -hmm. on some of the managerial style during the course of the season. But of course, there's a lot of information that we don't have throughout the course of the season that maybe in you know maybe encourages some of the moves that Dusty makes. But at the end of the year, he made great moves in the World Series, used that bullpen appropriately, used those starters appropriately, and and won a World Series championship. So my number one is Dusty getting that World Series championship. Everything that he has done as a player, every adversity he's overcome, uh, winning a World Series as a player and now adding that trophy to his mantle as a manager solidifies him, obviously, in the world, in the, in the Baseball Hall of Fame, but it also solidifies him as a human being. And you talked about him coming here, being a guy that was going to be a little bit, you know, be a leader in that clubhouse as far as. Uh, being a, a sustaining, comforting voice in the 
in the in midst of turmoil. And he did a great job at that, kind of calmed the seas, brought the game back to the field and out of the media, developed the trust with the players. They went out and won him a championship. So them together winning that championship for Dusty Baker is my number one. So kudos to him. Uh, he's he's had several layers, layers of icing on his cake, but he finally got that cherry to put at the top of it as a manager. 2,000 plus wins, a World Series championship, future Hall of Famer, Dusty Baker, World Series champion. Dude, Blummer, you're the one. This is why you get the big bucks, Blummer, because I have goosebumps now. <laughs> I officially have yeah. goosebumps. That's you are welcome. I, I, yeah, I mean, I mean, Blummer. It, <laughs> What else can we say about this guy? First of all, let's never mind all of the baseball stuff and all the other stuff. And he hung out with Hank mm-hmm. Aaron and like blah 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 and all that. The Dusty's, stories are epic. Yeah, he's one of the coolest people that's ever lived. I mean, he's genuinely one of the coolest guys of mm-hmm. all time, and he's exactly what you see. Right? He's not. Oh man, yeah, you're not going to get anything other than what you see. Yeah. If you just bump into him on the street, he's nice, right? I when I was in San Francisco. Uh, a couple of years ago, and um, I was wearing my Astros jersey. I was out walking around in San Francisco, and a woman just walked up to me and said, they're going to win it for Dusty. Like, he is, <laughs> he's everywhere he's, he's been. Beloved. The guy is just beloved. And so, yeah, there's, it could have happened to anybody better. It's storybook. And like you said, what he really did for this, never mind the team, the franchise, by coming in here and offering – legitimacy and stability and that sort of just you know he he, it was just it was so impressive and yeah uh it's hard to argue with him not being deserving of being one of the most one of the best baseball people of all time and you couldn't be i mean couldn't be more thrilled for the guy (laughs) it's just so cool and he'll be back we got another year of of dusty isms have you had a chance to sit down with dusty at all and just hear stories i'm curious um i've I've heard several and you know it's unique for me because i got to watch him as a dodger growing up in the la Mm. area so a lot of my questions are like what was bill russell like what was it like playing with reggie smith and you know some of these guys but uh you know a lot of my fandom comes out uh but at the same time i've heard I've, i've talked to him on the field quite a bit, but I'm, I have missed the opportunity, and maybe I need to make that a little more of a priority, is is buying him a bottle of wine, sitting down, and then having those stories, then having those conversations where you right. get a little more a little more intimate in, in some of those conversations. But every time that I have talked to him and he has told some of those stories about the past, mm-hmm. the recall is amazing, and you know the names and you know the situations, but the way he articulates it and the way he talks about it <clears throat> makes it better. He has made a lot of things better, and well, his stories should, are some of the best. Need to buy a bottle of wine from his own vineyard. For, I know. <laughs> He's probably in, sick of drinking that. Uh, <laughs> is anyone ever sick of drinking their no, own wine? No, not drinking your own I wine. I don't imagine. think so. I can't. Yeah, Blummer, honestly, you need to do a little more fanboying this year. I mean, I, I certainly would. I, the guy is I there are certain guys like that. I don't know if he's your guy like for me. Well, we can talk about that some on some upcoming episode, mm-hmm. but there are there are you know, I've interviewed tons of guys. There's still some guys I'm like hi, you know, it's like oh, yeah. some guys where you're just like you meet him you're like cuz I have I have some friends in the music industry. I'm like is there anybody like you know, you've worked with all these famous people. Is there anybody that you still like fanboy over and they're like, "Oh yeah, there's at least a couple people where I like pee myself." You know, mm-hmm. when I'm around him. So, but it, 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 Dusty's got to be one of those guys just because he is so cool and because he's been around for so long. Like you said, you get to ask him just about, did you know this guy? Did you know that guy? Like, that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, he, he's generational. And like we you know, like we said, the, the ability to understand the game, both in that analytic world mm-hmm. and in that – little more uh, primal sense on the field is what makes him special. But he's always a good conversation. And the authenticity is real. That guy is, uh, he, he wants the conversation. You know, I, I've been behind the cage where he, he will, he'll just kind of be looking around and all of a sudden you'll be in the line of fire. He'll come over and have that conversation. And that's kind of the beauty of Dusty. Dude, he knew Jimi Hendrix. Like it's. I mean, come <laughs> forget, on, man. Forget it. He knew Jeez. Jimi Hendrix. End of story. Just yeah. shut it down. Like, that's one of those stories where it's like, that's like the equivalent of being an astronaut who landed on the moon. That ends every conversation. Yeah. Oh, yeah? You've been to, you've been to uh, India? It's, India is beautiful. It's amazing, right? I walked on the moon. 
end of story, just mic drop instantaneously. Yeah. For him, That's it's cute. I hung out with Jimi Hendrix. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. over. Okay. You win. One nothing. You win. All right, Blummer. Um, so you got it. How many people are going to be with you this Thanksgiving? How many people uh, we've you got? got uh, I've got a sister-in-law, uh, in-laws coming, and then obviously my family, and then we have a couple of friends coming down from Austin that are uh, uh, past California friends that now live in Texas, uh, amazingly enough. And uh, we should have a pretty healthy contingent, maybe about 12 to 15 people. Nice. We're Mine is pushing 20 at this point Ooh, uh, nice. with uh, with lots of family and friends. We, have, we, we always do a big... My my buddy Frank, he always has Franksgiving, which is where he he works in the in the restaurant in this sort of hospitality world, and it's all people who are just sort of refugees from the restaurant world. Nice. And I'm always like I'm always threatening to just escape my own Thanksgiving for a little while and go over there because my guess is they have better wine. Um, <laughs> but it should be a fun Thanksgiving, I think, for for everybody. I mean, obviously, I want to also say, and I'm sure Blummer, you agree with this, that I'm thankful to people who've listened and subscribed yes. to. Great. I mean. Uh, we really appreciate you guys listening and and tweeting at us and uh you know we wouldn't be doing this if not for you guys i mean honestly we would we just probably wouldn't be recording it we'd still be talking about it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we just probably wouldn't have microphones and cameras in front of us um because god knows this is not a terrible thing to do no. um but yeah thanks to all you guys for let, keep it up we're going to we've got lots more um i'm already thinking about christmas episode I'm already thinking mm. about what's going to happen for that one. Um, maybe we'll have Santa Blum show up. <laughs> you never know. I got the outfit. <laughs> do you really? Tell me you do. Oh, yeah. Dude, I've got four kids. Of course I've got the Santa Claus. I think I still have the Santa Claus outfit. Amazing. Maybe I don't. I don't know. They're I've got a little the bit hat. too old for that. <laughs> yeah. I've got the hat. Well, can you still fit into it? That's the oh, big yeah. question. Are you kidding me? That thing's built for a fat man. i got plenty of years to wear that thing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, thanks everybody for joining us as always. I hope everybody out there has a great Thanksgiving uh, with friends and family and, and to more food than you could possibly shake a stick at. Um, we will be back next week after we have uh, managed to get out of our food coma, uh, our tryptophan induced napping. Um, and obviously, we will be back talking more ashes. The Hot Stove League is. Look, it's yeah. going to start burning up pretty quick here in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have a lot to talk about because there's going to be a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, continue to follow us, like and subscribe. Thanks to Bet Online for uh, sponsoring. And um, I think that's going to do it. Any final words, Blummer, for before Thanksgiving, buddy? No, I'm just grateful. There's a lot of things to be thankful for. I hope that everybody at home can uh, figure out what those are and be thankful for those during this time where we do give thanks. But like you said, the, you know, the fans and listeners are what move this machine that we have trying to create here with the uh, Believe in Astros here on the Believe Network. So we continue to say thank you. We continue to be grateful for the opportunity and what a good time to be an Astro fan. Absolutely. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And as always, go Astros. <laughs>